Once again I have a new 3D printer review for you guys. Inside of this box is the new model from Annette. So let's see how this new model looks and compare it with the ultra low cost A8, also from Annette. So let's get started. <laughs> What's up my friends, welcome back! This is the new NET E10 that just entered the 3D printers market maybe a little bit too soon. I heard that the model was rushed to market and that it had some problems, but hey, let's review it first and see the results. Inside of the box, on the first layer, we have some material samples, which I probably never use, just give me a small spool sample and it would be better. Then. We have the build tech material for the printing bed and finally the manual with color photos which is quite nice. On the next two layers we have the entire body which is basically divided in three already mounted parts. The bottom part with the heat bed and all the Y axis system. The main electronics case with all the controls and finally the top part with the X and Z axis system. We also got a putty knife, a metal bracket with a 3D printed spool holder, which is awkward, and a small box of parts with a small SD card, Teflon tube, spare parts, some screw and tools, USB cable and some zip ties. And that's it! This is all what's inside of the Annette E10 box. We've got the nice metal frame with these nice looking green stripes. The power supply and the mainboard all inside of this case, which looks pretty nice, but with no connectors. So probably to change a wire you should open the entire case, which I personally enjoy, but there might be someone who doesn't. Anyway, let's jump to the next part and mount this printer. Using the manual, with just 8 steps I mount the printer. There is not much to do since the kit is already 90% mounted. Just slide the top part into the T-nuts and tight everything in place. Next, we screw the bracket for the spool holder on the top of the case. Then, we add the heat element into the extruder block and tie the screw. The temperature sensor just goes into the hole. Once that is done, we screw in place the fan block on the top of the extruder part. Now, we connect all the end stops, heat bed and the step motors and we are done. The printer is mounted following the manual, but before I make my first test I would like to make some changes and talk about some problems that this kit has. First of all, let's take a look at the case. The thing that I most like about it is that it has an on and off switch and that the power supply is inside, which makes this kit much safer. I'm not a fan of external power supplies. The case also has an input fuse for safety and it seems properly cooled with fans inside. Then, we've got the same melty board as in the past reviews, screwed on the case with everything connected to it. It has the small heat dissipators for the step drivers and for the MOSFETs. I think it should have way bigger and better heat sinks for this. This kit doesn't include the external MOSFET, but I have two other printers with the same board and I use those every day and never gave me problems. I might have them properly cooled or I guess I'm just lucky. The power supply is a 12 volts 20 amps one, screwed on the case as well. Ok, that's it for the case. Let's jump onto the metal frame. First of all, the kit was very easy to mount in just half hour, but it has some small problems. The first really awkward thing is the placement of the Z axis motors. The connector will just touch the printing bed. This is for sure an error due to fast engineering this kit. But it's very easy to solve, just flip the motor and we are done. Another thing is the placement of the heat bed connector, right in the middle. 
it makes it really hard to pass the wire without hitting the step motor. I've managed to pass the wires underneath the bed and problem solved. The belt for the y-axis has a tensioner, but the x-axis don't. So you would have to adjust this part in order to tie the belt, which by the way are simply rubber belts with no metal or fiberglass reinforcement. I hope that won't give me problems. Ok, then the X carriage has no eccentric nuts, so tightening this thing is quite difficult. I've changed the screw and somehow using just my hands I was able to tight it well, so it won't wobble around. So basically, now we are ready to make our first test. I power on the printer, add the Biltech material on top of the printing bed and also connect the teflon tube between the extruder and the feeding motor. Now I press auto home followed by a small bed calibration. I start the heating process for PLA material. The bed gets to 55 degrees quite fast, which is nice despite its big size. I've inserted the PLA material into the feeder and now I prepare the 3D part. I've downloaded this rocket example from Thingiverse, created the G-code and printed using PLA material. I insert the SD card with the G-code and select print. The printer starts printing with no problems and it is so quiet. The only thing making noise is the fan of the power supply inside of the case. Everything is moving smooth and this is the first print which usually fails. The model turned out great, nice details and at fast print speed. I think improving the print settings and maybe lower the speed would give me even better results. I've printed the same file with some of my other 3D printers as the Annette A8, Tron XY X5 and my Tivo Tarantula in order to compare results. This is printed with the Tivo Tarantula and the part looks quite good. But compared with the one of the Annette, we could say that the E10 is the winner this time. Especially on the rocket tip. I mean, look at all these dots details and all the shapes of the rocket. I think the Annette E10 is a success till now. Of course, I should use it for a longer time in order to say more about it. But now I should give my first opinion on this 3D printer kit. And yes, I know. It is made looking like the Creality CR10, but it's nothing like that and of course the price is different as well. They've used the market success of the Creality to promote their own design. But that doesn't make it a bad printer. Actually, I think it's a very good printer, but with a quite rushed design. Just with a few improvements and some small changes, this printer could be quite good. And that's actually the point. I really enjoy upgrading printers, so I will definitely design some part for it. Maybe change the extruder or create a better metal X carriage. But as my first opinion, the first thing I've got to say is that it looks awesome compared with most of the other 3D printer kits. I really love the Tivo Tarantula look, but I like more this one. I personally like the green stripes. The metal body promise a lot. It looks quite strong and probably is the best thing about this printer. The body is pretty solid and complete with metal brackets. You also have machine metal parts for the extruder motor and other couplings. But then they've used some 3D printed parts for the smooth rods, but that's no problem for me. It has the basic linear bearings for the y-axis, but I personally prefer the wheel system because it makes less noise and moves better. The heat bed is bigger than the Annette A8, but gets hot quite fast. Inserting the filament is more than easy. The main case is a huge bonus and very safe, and the mounting process is very fast. Now about the main case, I don't understand why they've put a huge reset button just below the rotary knob. It is so easy to hit it by mistake and reset the entire print. That it's a minus one point from me. Also, the X carriage is quite bad. 
really hard to get it tight and it seems to move a bit, so it also has a minus one point from me. Another strange thing is the fact that the extruder is screwed directly on the metal plate and air can flow well. So I will definitely have to improve this. So despite all the small errors of this design, in general, this is a very good printer, but we can't compare it with the Creality. First of all, it's half the price of that, and the price is getting lower every day. So for around 250 euros, this is what you get. I mean, it's definitely better than the Annette A8, even with the small problems. The Annette A8 had a lot of problems as well, but it's still a good kit. So it's a nice printer to hack and improve, but maybe a little bit expensive. The print quality is awesome. The printer looks awesome. It's easy to use, easy to mount, good extrusion with the motor on the side, lead screws on both sides with proper bearing on the top part, smooth and quiet movement, very strong metal body that will increase the precision, bigger heat bed size and safe protected power supply. It would be nice to have an external MOSFET, wheel system for the Y-axis and better belts. Anyway, in my opinion this is a good kit, but it's not the lower price on the market. I like it, I think it's the best printer that I had till now in my workshop, but due to its roughly high price I can't fully recommend it. But if you don't have the money for the Creality and you like improving stuff, you want a 3D printer with strong body and nice look for your workshop, you should definitely buy this kit. In my opinion, it's a huge improvement from the Annette A8 and more other DIY kits there on the market, but probably with a bit rush to market design. That's it, that's all for this nice look 3D printer for now. Don't forget to check the description for more information and also a coupon link where you could buy this printer for a nice price and at the same time help my workshop grow and I sincerely thank you for that. Also check my Patreon page if you would like to support my electronics projects. Always check the links in the description for more information. I hope that you enjoyed this video, if so, don't forget to click the like button like crazy and share the video with your friends. If you have any question, just leave it in the comment section below or on my Q&A page. Also, don't forget to subscribe and watch all of my other great tutorials. Thanks again and see you later guys! Yeah.